Okay, so maybe that title was just a little bit dramatic, but I'm not kidding when I tell you this piece of plastic, I don't even know what they make this out of, single-handedly has changed the whole iPad game for me. Introducing the Apple Magic Key... I forgot to unplug it, hold on. Introducing the Apple Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pros. I kind of butchered that the first time. So you're probably like me, and you watch a ton of iPad reviews and Magic Keyboard reviews and all that fun stuff, and you were probably like, whoa, that looks, that looks really cool, I kind of want one. And then you hopped your way over to Apple's website, only to find out that this little keyboard thing costs $300, or if you have the bigger iPad, $350. You can literally buy an entirely new iPad with the same price that it cost for you to get just the keyboard. That's actually crazy. And actually, just to make this even better, if the iPad's on sale, the basic iPad, it costs less than just the keyboard for the iPad Pro. I'm sorry, th this, is, this is just insane. Anyway, when I first saw the price, I noped out of there so fast. But a few months later, and a lot of more reviews watched, I bit the bullet and I decided to try out the Apple Magic Keyboard, and these are my thoughts. So just a little disclaimer, I'm coming at this at the point of a consumer, and I have to justify spending $300 on just a keyboard. So bear in mind that not everything is gonna be perfect like you see in most reviews, and I'm gonna go in depth with the things that really irk me about this, as hopefully in a second generation, they could reduce the price and also fix all the problems that I have with it. And also, if you're new, please consider hitting that subscribe button and help the little guy out. I would greatly appreciate it. It's completely free, and you could choose to unsubscribe at any point if you end up not liking me in the future. So when this keyboard first came in the mail, I kid you not, I was refreshing Amazon non-stop because it, you know what says if it's like three, four, five stops away, it was like seven stops away, six stops away, five stops away. I just kept on refreshing until it finally got to my door, cracked that thing open. I even recorded myself opening it because I was really excited and that took a lot of willpower to actually grab my camera first and film the opening. But can I just say that Amazon packs these things horribly? But anyway, that's not Apple's fault, that's Amazon's fault. And when I first placed the iPad on this thing, just seeing that floating design in person was just, it was, it was insane. It looked so cool. It brings the iPad higher up towards your eye level, which I find really, really cool because initially with the old keyboards, hold on, with the old like folio keyboards, the iPad stays at the very bottom while on this one, the iPad is raised like slightly. It's like hanging off from here, which means it's more towards your eye level of how you would be using a regular laptop, which I think is awesome. Now, if you are budget conscious in any way, I highly recommend checking out the used market for these things because when it first came out, I checked it and nothing was listed. But if you go on eBay now or go on any used marketplace now, you can find a ton of these things listed for $250 around and they're in basically brand new condition. I got this from Amazon because one day shipping, come on. But if you were to get it off eBay, you can get that thing in usually like three to five days and you're saving yourself another $50. Amazon currently has this on sale. I don't know if it's a sale, but they just have it listed for $289 or $279. I'll put it, I'll put it over the screen. Yeah, it's not that much different from Apple's $299. If you really want to save some bucks, go on eBay. Now I'm just going to touch on this for a second and I want to talk about the build quality of this thing versus the Folio keyboard. On the surface, they seem to be made from the same quality, but I'm going to go a little bit more in depth and I wanna look at if this is like tapered in any way or maybe the seams are better done or it's just, I mean, it feels more solid than the Folio keyboard, but the material wise, like seeing how the Folio keyboard ages over time, this isn't a very expensive keyboard and I'd hate to see it age the same exact way. So I kinda of wanna go in depth a little bit on the material, how it feels to me. I don't know the specifics obviously, but let's just go into that. This is the Magic Keyboard obviously, and this is the Folio keyboard. You can tell just from the color alone that this material is darker. I'm not sure if that's just a stain or what. First thing, keyboard feels significantly better considering it's a real style keyboard. This is more just fabric over the keys. Love how that sounds though. So the material on the inside is completely different. This is more like a fabric. This is more of what you find on the outside of the folio keyboard. So let's close this guy up. Guys, honestly, I, I don't know. This, this feels different. Like it feels like it's more well-made because this kind of grips my finger a little more. It might be because I've been using it for a long time. So maybe the coating is a little off. As of now, this does feel significantly better. Let me check the exterior. Yeah, the, something's different. I don't know what, but something's definitely different. Okay, so now I want to get into how the iPad looks on it, how it feels, how it acts. Just basically putting the iPad actually on this thing. What are my impressions on it? Okay, so throwing the iPad on here, it feels really good in my opinion. I The floating design, like I said, 
just looks amazing. The keyboard looks amazing. Everything looks really, really good on this thing. The overall feel of it, it does not tip over as much as I thought it would. I guess because Apple engineered how far their hinge goes back to make sure it doesn't tip over. But the fact that I could put it on my lap or put it on an uneven surface and it acts like the Surface Pro used to act, how there's no way that thing is tipping over, that's really, really nice to see. Also the fact that you can tilt the hinge anyway from this position to this position, it doesn't seem like a lot, but honestly, it is a pretty big difference compared to the Folio keyboard where you can only do two positions before. I love the hinge design. I love that you can plug in the USB-C cable directly to the hinge so you don't have a little USB-C cable coming out the middle of your iPad. Overall, it is just really, really good. The iPad feels absolutely amazing on it. The one thing that I wanna see change, I'm gonna to touch about the stuff that I wanna see change later in the video, is the fact that I can't flip this back. And I understand why. Because if you were to flip it back, it would totally defeat the purpose of the rigidity of the Magic Keyboard. But I would love to see you be able to draw in this mode or draw in something without taking out the iPad because having a naked iPad in your hand is absolutely terrifying. Now, I do want to touch on one thing that a lot of people seem to have problems with, and that's the weight of it. I haven't noticed an issue with this so far. Honestly, the, the iPad's already so light that adding on an extra pound or whatever it is for the Magic Keyboard, for me, doesn't make much of a difference. I understand the point of wanting to travel as lightly as possible and as minimally as possible, but this to me, it's not a big deal. The weight really isn't that much of an issue, or at least as, as to the point where a lot of other reviewers were hating on this thing just because of the weight. I don't see that. I think it's perfectly reasonable that Apple had to do it this way, as the bottom of it is really supported and doesn't let the iPad tip over like it could be doing right now. One thing that I, I don't understand, okay, I kind of understand, but at the same time I really don't, is the opening mechanism for this and how hard it is to open. And you're gonna see in the unboxing that I did, like the short video I made for the unboxing, I couldn't even get it open with two hands when I first received it. That isn't a great beginning for a user experience with a product. I'd like to see maybe a lip just to grab it more or something like maybe less rigidity on the first initial open, I don't know. But I think that the opening of it, something needs to change because it's, it's not great. I'll do it right now for you. I'm gonna record this on my phone. Okay, so check this out. I'm gonna close this up with one hand, typically with a laptop, you can, you know, grip it and then use your other finger to hold it down. I'm gonna try to open this with one hand. <laughs> there's, there's nowhere to grab. Okay, without the pencil. Okay, the only way that I know that you can open this is if you were to grab it, flip it up, even here it's, and open it, <laughs> open it like that. I'm sorry, that's that's just way too much for a keyboard and it should be able to be open one-handed, even two-handed I had trouble with it. So I'm not sure what they could change about this, but some something's gotta go. And also I know a lot of you have seen reviewers talking about how the iPad won't fall off. I'm not gonna test this because I don't wanna break the iPad, but I'm gonna trust what they say and say that the magnets on this thing are absolutely insane. But it's not to the point where you can't even take the iPad off because if I grab it from here, this thing comes off so easily. Like, I don't know. I don't know how they did it, but whatever they did with the magnets really works and it keeps this thing on there very, very well. I just realized as I was putting it back, it wasn't fully on there. So I'm really glad it didn't fall. And also I'm gonna make another video on how I use the Magic Keyboard to remote desktop to my des desktop. Uh, it sounded weird. I'm gonna talk about how I do that. It's using a certain app and I got it on the on the desktop too. It works amazing. And I actually edit videos remotely on this iPad on my desktop using Premiere Pro. I want them to release Final Cut Pro on the iPad so I can stop doing that. But as of now, that's the one thing I really can't do besides gaming that I can't do on my iPad versus my desktop. And that's why I still have this thing here. Okay, so now let's get into the typing experience. And I wanna do something a little interesting. I wanna do a typing test between the desktop and between the iPad. So I'm gonna do it on the iPad first. So that's probably a little easier to maneuver. And then I'm gonna do it on the desktop using my mechanical keyboard right here. And let's just, let's get into that. All right, let's get into the typing test now. I'm just gonna go on Safari. I was looking at a gimbal, I guess. <laughs> Now, keep in mind, my average typing speed is about like 105, 110, something like that. So I wanna get something close to that here. Let me take off this stuff just to make it completely fair. I'm having a major issue with, not, not that, oh, well, minus dash, yeah, same thing. I'm having a major issue with that. So let's do the same exact test on the desktop now. Okay, so let's start it on here also.
All right, something's off today, but I will say this feels a little more accurate and a little better. I, I don't know why, but maybe because I'm used to it, I'm not used to the Magic Keyboard yet, but it does, it feels way better. So one thing that's really cool about this compared to the old Folio keyboards is the fact that these keys are now backlit. No way you're gonna see it in this lighting right now, but using it at night or using it in places that's dimly lit is really, really cool, considering that I had to memorize all the key locations on the Folio keyboard and I mean, I get it. They can't really get a backlit keyboard in here. Like there's, it's fabric. It's really difficult to. The fact that this is a real keyboard, like I heard it's the same keyboard they use in the MacBooks. That's really cool. And they could fit in the backlit aspect. I really appreciate that. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on is the trackpad. So keep this in mind. I'm a Windows user. I'm a Windows laptop user. I use Windows everything. If this is what Mac trackpads are like, but bigger, I am in love with Mac's trackpad. Seriously, the feel of it with your finger on it, everything is just so amazingly done. The gestures are cool. Three finger up, two fingers to the side to go back, two fingers to the right to go forward. If you go three fingers up and hold it, it goes to the multitasking window. It, it's just really cool. I'm all for the trackpad on iPad. I think it complements the OS really, really well. I do wish that more apps supported the trackpad because there's a lot of apps currently that don't really support it yet. I get it, it's still really new, but I'd love to see some more compatibility on that. Maybe Apple pushing it on their end. That would be amazing to have all apps really support the trackpad to its fullest extent. Mainly YouTube. YouTube, the app at least, does not support the trackpad right now. And I'd love to see that implemented in the future. I will make another video on trying to edit on LumaFusion or on Lightroom, like really quick paced editing with the trackpad. I don't know if I'm gonna like it yet. I don't wanna leave Premiere Pro just yet. I want them to release Final Cut Pro on the iPad because that will just make my entire year. But I am gonna try editing a video on LumaFusion, not this one, but in the future, an easier video to edit on LumaFusion. Now the final thing, will I be keeping it? There's a few really specific gripes I have with this thing. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna keep it, but there are things that I wanna see addressed. First of all, no double tap and drag. Don't understand that. In every trackpad I've used, if you need to move icons around or click and hold something and move it somewhere else, you can double tap and drag. They have tap to click, they don't have double tap and dragging. I, this is something really minor. I don't know why they didn't implement it in the OS at least, but hopefully this is something that can be changed in the future because remote desktoping, wow, that's a word. Going into remote desktop to my desktop to do stuff, not having double tap and drag is just weird. Second gripe, similar to the tap aspect. When you get a message and you wanna click and hold on it to open it in that little window, I'll show it all on here. They don't have that. I, I don't I don't know why, but you, you can't tap and hold just like you can't double tap and drag. This is another tapping thing that I have an issue with. I'm just used to this on other trackpads. I think they should implement it because I don't see why not. I don't like the aspect of having to click and hold. Really, this is just a very minor things, but for some reason that just bothers me. Being hard to open, we already spoke about, but again, this, this needs to be addressed. It can't be that difficult to open up a trackpad because I'm a tech person and even I had difficulty opening this. Like some something's wrong, just the way they did it, the closing mechanism, something. They just need to change anything to make it a little bit easier to open. And the final two things, that was four. The final two things is the volume button or the way you control volume and brightness is very weird right now. You have to go to the top right, bring your trackpad all the way there to open up the uh, control center. Forgot the name for a second. And you have to go over the volume or brightness and do the swipe down. I don't like that. That's way too many steps to do it. There should be a command. Like if you hold command and swipe down, it should reduce the volume or the function row keys that I don't know why they didn't implement. I mean, there's no room, but they could have they could have done something, I'm sure. But that that's sort of too many extra steps in order to just adjust your brightness and your volume where on every single other device, it's so much faster. And finally, the fact that you cannot fold the, the keyboard backwards. I take a lot of notes for class and just the, the fact that I can't fold it back, I have to take it off and use it with no case, no nothing. It's, it's just, it's too much. If you drop this thing, which I get it, you don't really drop your laptop, but this isn't a laptop. This thing can be held just straight up like this. It's easy to drop, it's all glass. The back can get scratched up so easily. I'd love to see a way for this keyboard to fold backwards in the future. I'm not getting my hopes up though, but hopefully eventually they can find a way to do that. As of now, I'm just taking it off, folding the keyboard down and I'm putting it on the keyboard itself. Not the best solution, but it works for the time being. Now, finally, will I be keeping this? Yes, but not for the price that I paid for it. I will try and snipe a deal off eBay in order to get it because I think this thing truly changes the iPad experience, but for $300, it's just not there for me yet. If this thing was 250 starting and I can get it used for 200, 1000% I'd be on board for it. I think that's a great price for this, but the 300 and if you have the 13 inch 350, that's just crazy. But I will be keeping it, just not for the price that I got for it. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed the video. I'm gonna have timestamps all over this video to make going through it a lot easier. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a like and consider subscribing because it will greatly, greatly benefit the channel and help the little guy out like me. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.